Uh, namaste. We are here with Gautam Ji once again on a very special podcast, uh, our second episode. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to wish all the devotees a very happy Ram Nomi. So thank you, Gautam, for your time once again. And uh, the last episode was very well received. And uh, thank you so much. Most welcome, Nick. I am glad that uh, the audience has received the teaching and the message well. Uh, you know, we really, really look forward to more episodes with you and we are so grateful for your time uh, that you give us so kindly. My pleasure. My pleasure. Gautam, yesterday I happened to have a small conversation with Hema Ma and I would just like to share a small message. Uh, it pertains to the current situation. Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity for that. Uh, what she said is that specifically Baba has asked all devotees to take a little bit of Udi, mix it in water and sprinkle it around the periphery of their homes if it is an independent home, if that is possible. If not, if they can do it at the, the door, the main door entrance and the windows. Mm -hmm. And this practice must be done every day. And in addition to this, uh, chanting of the Gayatri Mantra, if possible, which is continuous, would be great. Or at the very least, to have the recording of the Gayatri Mantra play in the home all the time. Uh, she said, Baba has said, people don't realize the seriousness of this, the, the magnitude of this uh, disease that is spreading. And uh, these two things one must practice with all certainty. Yes, I think uh, they are very interesting suggestions if we even explore them a bit. Mm -hmm. Because you see, water carries the vibrations within it. That's why if you look at, I'm sure your audience is familiar with the Golden Temple in Amritsar, which is surrounded by a body of water. Now that water has absorbed the vibration of all the chanting which has gone on for hundreds of years in that temple, you see. So the atmosphere gets charged. So that is why the suggestion of putting sprinkling water around the house with the Udi because that means it is charged with Baba's vibration. It's a very significant, significant aspect. And let's not forget that the human body itself is 70% water. So the content of our minds is equally important at a time like this because we are carrying that vibration within us. And of course, the Gayatri Mantra is so appropriate. Let's not forget that the word Mantra itself means to free the mind. And our minds are so occupied with all these fear-based concepts now that the Mantra will only help to clear that vibration not only from within ourselves but from our environment. So these are two wonderful uh, suggestions which have come through Hey Mama. You know, uh, it also takes me to a small story in the Sai Satcharit of uh, the cholera epidemic that had happened and Baba had ground wheat and asked uh, the ladies there to go around the village and sprinkle that all around. So as Baba had assured then that he's taking care of his devotees, so he has given the assurance now that uh, he is standing between them and the disease and nothing will touch the devotees that have faith they will sail through. Mm -hmm. Gautam, I happened to read a story in the Sai Satcharit the other day while I was reading. It was the story of Jabahar Ali and Baba, where this fakir came into the village and uh, he was quite a sweet talker. So he actually stayed there and, uh, you know, took to Baba and tried to play the role of his guru. And Baba also played along. I hope you have read the story, Gautam. Yes, I am quite familiar with it. It's a very important story, in fact. Uh, but go on. So, you know, I wanted to see, uh, talk to you about this and, uh, you know, just get your views on the story and what devotees can take away. Because Baba essentially played along the role of the disciple, knowing fully well that uh, Jabar Ali, the fakir, had his own shortcomings. So, you know, I just wanted to talk to you. I felt there's a lot for devotees to take from the story. Yes, yes. Uh, there are various aspects to this most interesting story, actually. Uh, the first being that, as we all know, that Baba had the unique gift of being able to see his Rinanubandhans 
with individuals. He could just look at them and know how many births they have been with him from the past lives. That other stories are also touching upon this subject. So obviously Baba knew his previous association with Jawahar Ali, you see. Now in this incarnation, the karma had to play out. It is Baba's greatness that he saw the bondage of this relationship and it needed to play out till the end. And Baba did what is required of any Guru-Disciple relationship. You consider the Guru as God. So he allowed Jawahar Ali to play that role. That is the bigness of Baba's heart, mm. you see. Mm. So it is even said in our scriptures, in fact, that the Guru is God in human form. I will tell you another interesting story as an aside. In Yogananda's book, The Autobiography of a Yogi, there is a story of Mahavtar Babaji in the Himalayas, the Deathless Master. And one disciple climbs mountain range upon mountain range in order to reach Mahavtar Babaji and finally reaches him, exhausted and tired. And when he sees Babaji, he goes into a prostration and says, Master, I have come. And Mahavtar Babaji tells him, All right, if you want to be my disciple, then please go and jump off the cliff. And he is shocked. But he says, You are my master and I will do as I am told. And he does that. And then after he falls off, Mahavtar Babaji goes and revives him and says, you have passed the test. And the test is this. If you consider the Guru to be God in human form, then you have to follow his command. Today, in many Guru-disciple relationships, that does not happen. And if I recall correctly, Baba himself has said that one needs a living Guru. Am I right about that? Absolutely. It Where is... does he say that? Could you remind me? See, there is a chapter in which Baba gives the 10 prerequisites for self-realization. And the ninth one is very clearly the need of a living Guru. Because he said the path is so full of obstacles that one can easily get deluded and fall. And a living master who has reached the very end is the guide that will take you through this. Baba has very emphatically said this. Fantastic. So you see, now, of course, we know that Baba did not need a Guru like we need a Guru, let's say, in that sense. But he could see that a dynamic was established here between a Guru and a disciple. So he fulfilled that role to the hilt. Hmm. And in this story, I remember how it ends where then Jawahar Ali comes back and falls at Baba's feet and says, I have now seen your greatness, you see. So it is a very important story for us for two reasons. One is to show that even someone of Baba's stature honored this guru-disciple relationship for the period it lasted, which means he kept the so-called Guru's personality aside. Jawahar Ali's personality was not known to be the best. People didn't like him. But Baba's ego was so refined that he kept that out of the way and allowed the equation to fulfill itself. Whereas we tend to criticize and complain even about our own Gurus because we judge them as individuals. We do not consider them to be God in human form, you see. There are numerous stories, Gautam, of various sincere devotees who may have gone to masters that have their shortcomings or have not fully realized, but they are so guileless and their faith is so complete that one example is the master may just casually tell the devotee, take God's name and you will cross the river. And actually that happens because the devotee has complete faith. And that is so prominent that even the master would be taken aback that how did this happen? So there are so many stories I could cite. And uh, there is so much to take away from this Leela of Baba's. 
that uh, I feel if the devotee is sincere and they look within at themselves rather, rather than look at shortcomings in the master or anybody else, that will really take them forward a long way. Yes. And Nick, the main thing here is, you know, which I have emphasized even in the videos we've uh, had together earlier, we tend to read these stories as very interesting stories and that's it. But I think through these stories, we have to look at our own lives, as you rightly said, and what is our relationship not only with just gurus, hmm. with everyone in our life. Because everyone is an aspect of the same source, you see. So what is our relationship with them? And such a relationship of the highest degree, which is the guru-disciple relationship, and how it has played out in that story, is such a good uh, peg to measure our relationships, in fact, all of our relationships, be it with family, friends, or even strangers. So, to now digress a bit and move away from the Guru-Disciple relationship, if we truly have an understanding that everyone in our life, everyone that we come across is an instrument of God, of the Divine, or let's say is an instrument of Baba for that matter, then what happens? We don't blame and condemn them for things they are supposed to have done. And we don't blame and condemn ourselves, you see. This whole dynamic which was earlier based on blame, condemnation, hatred, malice, jealousy and envy, hmm. that starts dissolving. Because that dynamic is based on the principle of doership. I blame you for something you are supposed to have done to me. That is the ego talking, you see. And that starts dissolving with this understanding. When you can see with an even vision, when you can see that everyone in your life, all your relationships, especially the closest ones and the ones you do not like, are all aspects of the same source, you develop this even vision. You, be, you become less critical, less judgmental, because you now understand that everyone has been shaped by their genetics and conditioning just like I have been. So there is a sense of acceptance which starts blossoming in your heart. Compassion starts arising. And that is truly the gift of the spiritual journey. And that is why I keep emphasizing that whichever story one reads in the Sai Sat Charita, one has to apply it to one's own life and daily living. Absolutely. Gautam, one other pointer I took away from this is this also is the pinnacle of Saburi in action. Because Baba has let life flow, let the event roll out without any interference at all. Yes, and there is a deeper aspect to this Saburi, uh, Nick. You see, uh, when we in our normal relationships, when there is a blame game, when there is conflict, we are perpetuating the bondage. It's like a tennis match, mm. you see. I hit the ball across the net, you hit it back. This is the action-reaction loop. Many of our relationships are just blindly based on action and reaction. You said this to me, so I'm going to say this to you. Just hardwired patterning and conditioning, you see. Now, when this changes to just witnessing, when Witnessing requires only one of the two people in this dynamic. It doesn't require both. Now, when you have a tennis match, can you have it only with one person playing against himself? It's not possible. So, there is no resistance in this dynamic. So, the bondage of that relationship, the bandhan, the bandhan of the rina drops. So, can you imagine a situation where Baba would end up arguing with Jawahar Ali? It would not arise. Because the, the question of the bondage itself was a non-issue. It didn't begin only. Whereas if it had begun, it would perpetuate. You see, the karma would keep going on and on like we do with our relationships. Our relationships are based on a karmic cycle which keeps perpetuating itself. 
going on and on and on and on over lifetimes. But if one of the two in that relationship stops and has the awareness to just be a witness to what transpires, that cuts off the involvement in the relationship. And Saburi, in fact, I would go further to say that true Saburi, which is patience, leads to witnessing. Because then you are not frustrated and trying to be patient but boiling inside. Saburi, patience, is an aspect of witnessing. Gautam, this is so, so pertinent to the current situation where this story and especially this pointer you have shared because I can very easily assume there are many devotees who are stuck in a situation, in a dynamic at home with either family members or spouses where this dynamic may play out the action-reaction loop. But this is such an excellent pointer you have shared that it could just bring in witnessing for them. And I will give you a classic example, Nick. About a week ago, when the lockdown began, I had a friend who called me and said how much he's enjoying his time at home with his family and his children. And the same friend called me two days ago and said how frustrated everyone is becoming with each other because it's a confined space, you see. So what is happening is egos cannot get along with egos only till a point they can when they are in their comfort zone. Now, these are the opportunities given to you to look at how much are you living the teaching. You see, that's very important. I would like to share this with the audience that please live these days in awareness because then your spiritual journey will reach very deep layers. So rather than getting frustrated in the relationship, even if it arises because it is natural for egos to get frustrated, but witness its arising. Look at it. Look at what your own trigger points are. Because that is the beauty of the journey of life. God has gifted humans with awareness. Human beings are the only species on the planet which are aware that they are aware. Homo sapiens sapiens, man who is aware that he is aware. So that is a gift we have been given. So reflection, contemplation, introspection, without judging oneself or the other, that is what Shraddha and Saburi are about. So hopefully this time is spent on these aspects of life and living and not just as a complaint that, oh, I'm confined to my four walls, I'm stuck, I have nothing to do, no newspapers to read, I'm just switching TV channels all the time. You see, the mind, it's, it's so easy to see how the mind is so dependent on all these external factors that if one just brings awareness into just knowing that, then allow the mind to do what it wants to do because you are witnessing all its antics. Thank you, Gautam. This has been a phenomenal talk with you. I mean, it is so beautiful that uh, I was able to talk to you about this little story and how it. there are so many pointers for all of us to take from this and apply it into our lives, into this current situation. And I hope, Gautam, uh, in the coming days that if we are able to continue these series of talks, and uh, Gautam, I would also like to take this opportunity to let devotees know about your live streaming uh, and the satsangs. And uh, I believe, Gautam, you have uh, the live satsangs once a week? Uh, currently twice a week because of the lockdown, Nick. Okay, so uh, could you tell us a little bit about the structure? Is it a talk for a particular duration of time and then it is open to questions that people may pose as comments? That's right. It's generally a one-hour talk and for the first half an hour, I speak about whatever comes. And then in the next half an hour, I view the questions on the feed of the channel. This is the YouTube channel. 
and uh, the dates are mentioned in advance also on my website which is gothamsachdeva.com in the calendar section and if uh, there are people who have subscribed to my youtube channel then they automatically get the notifications as well okay wonderful so i will leave both these links in the description so all those devotees can reach you and uh, if they have questions they could get a chance to pose them to you during the live satsang sure and sure. also i would like to take this opportunity to thank all the patrons because of their support this project has really been possible and it has taken for, uh, taken shape so Beautiful. Uh, thank you to all of them and uh, yeah a thought uh, of prayer to all those who are suffering and uh, it is a very difficult time for many and uh, yeah our prayers and thoughts with all and may baba's grace uh, be upon all his children so be able to sail this through indeed indeed well said nick thank you gautam all the best wish Take you care. the same thank you bye bye